Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Jaworski, the Toronto Website Developer. And in this third video tutorial, I want to show you how we can use Bootstrap to nest different columns, uh, as well as improve our search engine optimization by pushing and pulling different content so that it gets rendered differently than it's actually written uh, and how search engines would crawl it. But before we do that, you know, notice I'm at leanpub.com slash white dash hat dash hacking. This is a book that I've been writing. And it's all about white hat hacking. Uh, not only is it for white hat hackers, but it's also for developers to help learn a little bit more about application security. Um, and so it draws on examples that are publicly accessible from HackerOne, uh, from sites like Twitter, Shopify, HackerOne, Coinbase, uh, to look at stuff like cross-site scripting, uh, cross-site request forgery, etc., and how you can prevent it on your websites. But also, if you want to earn a couple extra bucks, you can go ahead with white hat hacking on HackerOne. Um, and submit vulnerabilities to the site uh, for companies that are doing it, uh, and they'll pay you uh, once you find them. So again, it's a book that I'm writing. It's about 20% complete now. If you do purchase it, you get unlimited updates, uh, and I hope to have it complete by uh, the end of the month. It does have about 10 different examples now, ranging from cross-site request forgeries to XSS, uh, or XSS, to uh, buffer overflows. Uh, so again, hopefully you find it interesting. Um, leanpub.com, white hat hacking. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be taking a look at how we can nest columns uh, and we can also play with the column ordering. And so again, over at getbootstrap.com CSS grid column ordering, you'll see here on the right, we were already in the grid system before. Um, and this is pretty straightforward, but it's actually pretty cool to play with. Uh, and search engines uh, love having your content up at the top. So you definitely want to do that. Here's an example of what we're going to be doing from uh, the content perspective. So if we look at the code, this is actually uh, coming second or first or whatever we're doing um, and we're actually pushing and pulling and then if i take away this two you can see here uh before we had the two columns now i've got tutorial one two three and i've got sub one sub two and then four and five and so i'm going to show you how we can go ahead and do something cool like that as well this is our previous example so we're going to be replacing and removing so why don't we head over to index.html um, which was what we had before and so what we want to do is we look back to the example here under tutorial one, we want to have sub one and sub two. So let's go ahead and try to get that done. Go back to our code and here in the div um, for this, we're going to actually add another row. And so we'll take these guys and we'll paste them here. And we'll close this row. I'm sorry, close that div and we're going to close the row. And so let's just go ahead, copy these, paste them in here. And let's just call this sub tutorial one. And so what we want to do is take this guy out because, and we'll go ahead and actually make this excess six. So on the smallest, it's going to be half. And we'll just copy this guy and we'll paste him there. And because we know it gets ugly, we're going to take out the sixth tutorial here. So when we save that and reload this page, now you see we've got tutorial one, tutorial two, three, sub one, sub one, because we didn't change it, tutorial four, tutorial five. And we did that by adding another row within one of the columns. And so what is happening here is we're saying, this has to be column four, so it's going to be the fourth width, one third, right? Within that one third, divvy up and give me half of each. And so that's what this six is saying. Remember, Bootstrap will use the smallest available and apply it up. So we're saying for the smallest site, it's going to be half, and this should actually stay. So when we go ahead, you can see rolling, it always stays as half. And so it, that's what Bootstrap provides us. And so again, we added a, a row within a row but we're actually applying it within that four available spot on a desktop, within that six on a tablet, and within that 12 on a phone. And so we just treat that as its own grid. We add the uh, application stuff that we want, and we're good to go. And that's how you can nest within nesting. Now, for the other example, here, when we go to complete two, what we want to do is, this is actually a backwards example. Because when we look at this code, this is being rendered first and then this, but you'll see it's actually printing this and then printing this. And so what we want to do is we want to have a sidebar here on the left 
but we don't want that to be printed first and have search engines crawl that. We want the higher, more important information to be rendered first uh, because Google tends to provide more weight to that. So let's go ahead and rather than rather than overwrite this, let's go ahead and create index2.html. And so we can close this, we can close this and go into index2. And so we're going to go ahead and get rid of the row we just created. Oops, what happened there? Do that to HTML. Hmm, it went all funny. Okay, the color shouldn't really matter. Let's just get out of here in case. Okay, so there we go. So we have our columns, we have our text. What we want to do is we want this to be rendered and we want to have a sidebar. So let's go ahead and add that. So we're going to go div class equal to row and whereas we didn't have any style up there we're going to go call xs this is going to be three oops need to close that so we're saying give us three for that and then we want call xs nine for this so all of our content is going to take up nine pieces of the grid and then our sidebar is going to take up three and so we can actually go ahead and just make this clear. We'll add h2, I don't know, um, sidebar. Okay, now when we take a look at this, we want index2.html. And so here's our sidebar being rendered. But we actually want the sidebar over here. So how do we do that? Let's go ahead and actually add, let's just add some items in here. I'm just going to grab them from complete to just for the sake of saving us some time. And just make sure these are showing up right. There we go. So we have our menu. What uh, Bootstrap actually provides us is this cool uh, excess. We want to do a pull and we want to pull it over nine. And we're going to do the same thing up here, except this is going to be called push three. So when we reload this, you'll see what this is actually doing is we're telling Bootstrap that. This is going to be our main sidebar here is going to be three wide, but when you render it, pull it back nine places. So pull it back nine and give it three. Here we're saying this is for our content, it's going to be nine wide, but push it over three. So what ends up happening is the two of them swap. So you still get your content here at the top of the page in terms of how it's rendered, but in terms of the look and feel, you actually get the sidebar over here. And this is a great CSS trick. And so you can actually look at the, the page here. Here's our content up near the top. And then our menu is down near the bottom. Um, and again, you always want to do that for search engine optimization. Uh, it seems to be a thing that is um, uh, valuable for you. And so that's why one of the reasons, I guess, that Bootstrap provides it. But you have the ability to swap and play with different items, render them differently, um, when in fact the, the code is a little bit different under the hood. And so that's it for this video tutorial. I showed you how you can actually nest columns. So that's kind of cool. Uh, rows within rows. And here we used uh, push and pull all from Bootstrap CSS column ordering as well as nesting columns. Again, if this tutorial helped you, please leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know, and hopefully we'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks very much for watching.